Yes, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin. In today's video, I wanna share with you the latest news involving Bitcoin, involving Gucci and Ethereum, involving Solana, and much more. Like always, check the timestamps down below, hit the like button, and let's jump in starting with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the first time we have given property rights to 8 billion people. This is the founder of Core Scientific dropping some fire. And even though cryptocurrency is a, in a down market this year, everything practically is, is in a down market this year, Bitcoin, the revolution that is digital scarcity, is literally changing lives. This is a 50 second clip. Watch this. You cannot corrupt Bitcoin. You cannot alter the records. And that's all due to the proof of work consensus mechanism, which are tens or hundreds of thousands of nodes located globally around the world. In order to hack the Bitcoin network, you would have to hack all of the nodes simultaneously, which is impossible. So we have the first unhackable network in human history. And what that means is the government can't hack it, the hackers can't hack it. And so if you have a Bitcoin on your digital wallet and you hold your keys to it, nobody can take it from you. And for human rights people, that that is the first time in human history we've given private property to 8 billion people on the planet, despite what their government says. And so that's uh, one of the other differentiating factors for proof of work. Yes, very well spoken. Bitcoin is literally the strongest computing network in the world, and it's distributed globally backed by the people. Now, I do have one correction to Darren's statements on this. He said you have to control 100% of the network to take control, but technically you do only have to control 51%. It's called a 51% attack. Yet he is correct in stating that this sort of attack is near impossible because of how censorship resistant and decentralized the computing network that is Bitcoin is. Now, I don't wanna to be too clip heavy in this episode, but let me share with you a throwback of Andreas Antonopoulos talking about 51% attacks and him stating that even if a nation state tried to attack the Bitcoin network, they would find that it's actually more profitable to them just to mine and actually secure the network. That would be more profitable to them. This is a 90 second clip, watch this. Just, uh, just a quick follow up on that. Um, do you have any concerns about a large nation state that has um, interest in just actively destroying Bitcoin to make their own, you know, super rigs and uh, design chips and just throw hundreds of millions or billions of dollars to intentionally disrupt the blockchain. Yeah, I, I don't worry about that at all. Um, this cannot be done with Bitcoin anymore. This is something that can only be done with nascent altcoins. Uh, Bitcoin has achieved a, a level of computing that uh, no single nation state can, uh, can overthrow it through computation alone. Uh, the effort to do so would require a massive covert operation of chip fabrication, uh, then the coordinated assault that would give them dominance over the next block for 10 minutes until we kick those bastards off the network, uh, rework the protocol around them, they would be revealed, they would have lost a billion dollars doing this, and all they got to do was one double spend. <laughs> Now here's the thing, long before we get to that point, they figure out that if they just let this stuff run, they can actually get some Bitcoin <laughs> as a reward, because the incentive structure actually works. And so I'm not worried about that. And a lot of people are watching the blockchain. And as I said before, what are they going to do? So they take over and they fork the blockchain and they go somewhere, right? They've created an alternative blockchain. Great. What are we going to do? Who's going to join the NSA blockchain? <laughs> Anybody want to jump on Fedcoin? <laughs> so we're all going to stay on the old fork. Difficulty will go down. It will get more profitable for the miners who stayed behind, and we'll carry on with our coin and they can go mine whatever the hell they want on their alternative blockchain. They achieve nothing. They can't make protocol changes because, we, as I said, five constituencies in consensus, and it would take a billion dollars to pull the most ridiculous Keystone Cops failure in history. <laughs> Plus, this would actually require government that can do IT. <laughs> All right. Like the video, like the video, get this information out there, and leave a comment on your thoughts on what Andreas stated. Hey, but what about Ethereum? What about Solana? 
Well, let's keep moving and talk about the innovation happening with those cryptos. Gucci invests $25,000 in a DAO of NFT marketplace Super Rare to start a digital art vault. And by the way, investing this much means they did buy the tokens and Super Rare is a part of the Ethereum ecosystem. Italian high-end luxury brand Gucci is venturing further into Web3. Gucci has acquired $25,000 worth of rare tokens to join the Super Rare DAO. With its buy-in, Gucci is launching the Vault Art Space, an exhibition that will include a selection of NFT artworks by 29 artists. In a direct quote from Gucci on why they chose Super Rare, we approached Super Rare for this, knowing we could rely on our mutual effort to amplify the vision of this multifaceted group of artists. We were fascinated by Super Rare's ability to provide artists with a platform to showcase their work in an innovative way, one that is built on a sense of community and that enhances interactions and decentralization as key tools to support both artists and collectors. So this is a huge sign of support from Gucci and one that may have major implications for the future. This partnership marks the first time the fashion house partakes in a DAO, giving them governance rights in the super rare community and now the two are weighing what that means for a luxury brand to buy into a DAO and that the initiative could set a trend for other big players. If you like Ethereum, you like this, let's keep moving. And next up, huge announcement for the channel. Just this morning, we dropped our interview with legendary filmmaker Spike Lee. Why Spike Lee is bullish on Bitcoin and NFTs. It was a 41 minute conversation but Spike Lee did love the questions. Here's proof. One of the things, and you guys understand this, the best way to get interaction from the people you interview, you gotta have smart, interesting questions. Because if you don't, you're not gonna get what you want. And you guys did it. It was an honor and pleasure meeting you. The Arnold Brothers in the house. <laughs> Keep doing your thing, man. Keep doing your thing. Attack, 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 attack. All right. Link down below. Seek it out. Next up, what about Solana? Solana Labs is building a Web3 mobile phone. So the backers of the Solana blockchain said this device will cost around $1,000 and be available for delivery in early 2023. So let's break down why they're doing this, as well as some of the potential features on this new phone. This new phone will be called Saga, and it will have an Android handset. Here are the details. The phone marks Solana's biggest bet yet on mobile focused growth, and it will feature a Web3 DApp Store, integrated Solana Pay to facilitate QR code based on-chain payments, and also a mobile wallet adapter and a seed vault that will store private keys deep within the recesses of the phone. So essentially they're saying that the phone will prioritize security. It's going to prioritize an easy way for cryptocurrency based payments, as well as feature a DApp store specifically to enhance the growth of Web3. In a direct quote from San Bankman Freed, who is a key Solana backer, everything is going mobile. In most countries, most of the access happens through mobile phones. But crypto mobile is behind the times, he said, noting how clunky accessing dApps on mobile devices is now. The best solution for this is having the actual wallet built into your phone. And this is true in a sense that most people globally don't have computers, but most people do have cell phones. In a direct quote from Solana co-founder, we live our lives on mobile devices, except for Web3, because there hasn't been a mobile-centric approach to private key management. The Solana mobile stack shows a new path forward on Solana that is open sourced, secure, optimized for Web3 and easy to use. And obviously, if successful, this would benefit all of crypto, but especially the Solana network. And for all you OGs out there, this has been tried before. Siren Labs pursued a plan in 2018 to ship a blockchain native phone, but faced layoffs. This was just when the bear market started faced layoffs and litigation as the product failed to gain traction. Well, the Solana co-founders were asked about this, asked, hey, what's different about your phone than the one that was tried in 2018? And they said, when asked about the shortcomings of past attempts from others, 
They said the Solana phone was better positioned for success because there are more crypto developers in the space relative to 2018. If you would buy this phone for $1,000 in 2023, let me know. And that is the video. My name's Austin. Like always, see you tomorrow.